Today we're checking out how to build the Darknet 13 do-it-yourself badge. Let's jump on in. Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. It's Gatorbyte on the mic going through and talking to you about the DEFCON Darknet 13 badge for this year. If you've gone through, already printed off your set, you're going to need yourself a couple set of tools, your flush cut and or some type of pliers. A needle nose would be best. So this is a pair that I found at Home Depot. After you've printed this, you can literally flex the plate and pop everything off, which is fantastic because there are very little supports this year. So cleanup should be a breeze. In fact, that's just a small part of the, uh, the support, just like right there. So we're gonna then take off these two parts because these are buttons that we want to keep that we'll be using a little bit later on. Past that, you can clean off this and we're done with the 3D printer sheet. So this is the badge front. You actually have a spot here that we need to use the needle nose pliers to jump in here and grab. This is where one of the antennas for the Helltech device comes up into the badge face. And then from here to remove the supports on the back side, we have this L looking piece and then these two other sections. When we went through and printed this, we printed with the support bed only selected. So very little waste this time around, very easy to clean. And it takes less than a minute to go through and clean these things up. You could possibly use your fingers with this. I just find it easier to grab the needle nose pliers and the interesting thing is we didn't need to add any support for the USB or for the antenna slot because it's so small it wasn't needed so save yourself the material after you have gone through and cleaned everything else up on the battery compartment there is nothing that you need to clean so we are ready for our next step so go grab your Helltech device pull off your nuts and washers that are on the end here you're going to slip this in there's a lip that you see here so tuck it in first underneath the lip and then set it down into place and then you can go through and make sure the usb lines up with the hole you may need to move your antenna around a little bit to make sure it's set there's a little bit of wiggle space there if that bothers you you can either modify the case or go through and put just a little bit of hot melt glue as you can see, we can align the USB. From here, we can go through and adjust the antenna around a little bit here. And if you actually look, we've got this hole here with the hexagonal shape. So we can go through and actually have this lock in place from the inside of the case, which is a great first step. Once we've got that, we can go through and hold it with our fingers, go grab the washers and the lock washers and the nut and start putting these on. You're going to first want to get the one that's got a little bit of a grip so it'll hold onto the plastic as you put this down so it'll grip it. Then you're going to get your flat lock washer, which is the flat one. You put that on next and then you grab the nut and you screw that in. You can do this by hand. You can also go grab your pair of pliers to tighten it down a little bit. You just want to tighten it enough to where it's not wiggling around. So I just grab this guy and Tighten it up a little bit. A couple turns is all you need and you are good to go. So from there, we can see that it is now seated on the other side into the plastic and we're ready to go to our next step. As we just tighten it a little bit more, good. This loop can be tricky, so play with it a little bit. I'm gonna suggest the way that I went through and designed this is that it fit completely inside without an issue. I created an S type of pattern here and tucked it underneath and it worked out pretty well for me. Every cable is a little bit more stiff or less stiff, but you can see it works out pretty well here as this example. So let's talk about this next piece that we need to put on. We need to go through and grab our long screws. At this point, these are two, two M by 25 millimeter screws. So you can see there are tabs here. If we're gonna attach this to the front, there are negative tabs in the very front here where we can then slot it into place to hold the bottom front in place. This is a two different size holes. You have a circle and then you have a hexagon. 
put the buttons in on the face first as such and then you can slide into the tabs while holding the badge upright and this is the easiest way to put the buttons in sweet moves a little bit to the left a little bit to the right and we're ready to start assembling go ahead and grab your screws and you can hand tighten those down a little bit to where it's going through the badge face front into the badge face body you can continue to hand tighten or you can go grab your screwdriver at this point uh, once we've tightened this down a little bit it will hold it in place because the holes are just big enough to go through and feed it if you had a heat set press like this you could go through and modify the badge to handle that now for the battery this was specifically made for this size of battery for the 2000 milliamp hour just a little bit of space to move around but not allowing anything to come puncture it from above or from any of the sides so from here before you plug the battery into your badge you need to add the antenna you do see this little bump coming down from the badge power adapter for the battery to be plugged in so let's go ahead and take care of this antenna first once we've screwed that into place we can now attach the power otherwise you can actually ruin your radio antenna or your radio period so once that's plugged in line up the holes because there's only two holes on all the parts so once it's all lined up you should now be able to continue to screw your 25 millimeter long screws in this just takes a little bit of time and again it, it fits really well at this point so as you can continue through the body you can actually see that it's holding everything in place pretty well and as you continue to screw in you'll actually see the screw pop out the back just by a little bit so you can go through and do customizations here whether you want to put your name your handle on the badge front or on the badge body with like an insert here and then if you wanted a different size battery a larger or smaller you could go through and replace this back battery so it's all modular set up for your customizability if we're ready to continue on just screw everything into place all the way through to where it's holding on So very excited to see what folks go through and do whether you want to go through and have an attachment for a lanyard if you want to be able to put this on your backpack versus if you're carrying it around with you uh, it's interesting enough to where i'm seeing folks taking these on the trails to be able to communi communicate with each other so it's a small little package ready to go you could add a loop here or a loop right here on the back part of the uh, battery case or you could also put a hole through this part just missing the antenna so from here, let's go ahead and talk about plugging in and charging. We've got a large enough hole here to be able to go plug in a USB, but some folks were talking about how it was moving. So if you hold the screen in the front here, you're able to then plug in the USB. As an example, we can go through just a little bit of pressure is enough. Otherwise, you can do that small modification of either hot melt glue or modifying the case. So. With this, this is a quick introduction on how to go through and assemble the Darknet 13 badge for DEF CON 32. Next up, we're gonna talk about how to flash Meshtastic onto the badge with Mac, Windows, and Linux. Please like, subscribe, and we hope to see you at DEF CON.